Hey everybody, it's Doug Shelf with Remax Oceanside and Make Maine Your Home.com. In this week's episode of the Make Man Your Home podcast, I'm sitting down with Kevin from Beacon Electric. Uh, he just started Beacon Electric not too long ago, and he's been an electrician for a long, long time. It's really going to be great to speak with him. Um, I plan on talking to him about a few things, like you know, generators, uh, you know, fuse boxes, um, old wiring, um, and a lot of different things. He's a great guy. I think you'll enjoy it. So let's do this. <laughs> Hey guys, uh, I'm here with Kevin Dubriel. Good job. I got it, huh? Uh, Dubriel, and uh, he's with uh, Beacon Electric. Um, you just started your company, what, about a year ago? Shit, no, a month ago. A month ago. A month ago. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh, geez, I was thinking a year ago. That's awesome. Oh, so, brand hey. spanking new. Awesome. Fantastic. Um, I understand you've been doing this for a while. We'll, we'll of course, get into that. Yeah. yeah. So, hey, thanks for coming, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so, before we get going on like your business and all that kind of stuff, let's learn a little bit about you. Yeah. Um, so, where are you from? I live in Gray. Okay. I grew up in Harrison, little town. Yeah. Spent 12 years working out that way, out of Bridgeton. Yeah, sure. Um, moved into Gray about eight years ago, got a job in Gorham, worked there for six, and finally said after 18 years, got to go on my own. Ready to go on your own. Ready awesome. to go. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, very, it's been good. Very it's been cool. Good. So what what was it like growing up in Harrison? I know that's a, that's way up near like Casco, Naples, Bridgeton. Yeah, like all I loved it. Stuff. I mean, yeah. realistically, I wouldn't mind moving back up that way. Yeah. Except for the fact that it's a drive to get anywhere. It, it's it worse is, than living in Cape Elizabeth. It is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it yeah, is. yeah. It, it is out of the way. I sold a house up there this year actually, yeah. and uh, it is a hike. It is. It it can, is. I mean, for me, business wise, now living in Gray. I mean, I'm 30 minutes from anywhere in Portland. I'm yeah. 30 minutes from Thompson, Brunswick. You know, 45-ish down here to Cape Elizabeth. Right. I could be in Naples and Harrison another 25, 30 minutes. Right. So I'm fairly centrally located to be able to do great work anywhere. Yeah, Gray's a good time. Yeah. I mean, to get is. down here, hop on the turnpike. Exactly. You know, yeah, yeah, even sure. in Yarmouth, I could be in Yarmouth in 15 minutes. Yeah. So right. basically anywhere I'm trying to get work, it's a convenient place to be. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, central right right yep. there. That's yep. awesome. It works out well for me. Yeah, good. Um, so... Uh, Coming out of Harrison, when, where you're, you know, raised and all that kind of stuff, um, where'd you go after that? Like, did you go right from there to Gray? Or no, I bounced around a little bit. I went yeah. from there. I moved to Bridgeton for like a year. Then I went to Casco for a couple of years. Yeah. Well, before that, I actually I moved to what not moved, but I went to a school in Wyoming. Oh, you did for like two months. Wyoming. I was gonna be a mechanic. Yeah. Loved cars growing up. Sure. Loved muscle cars, working on cars. Oh yeah. Um, went out there, realized that I didn't like working on electronic cars all uh, the computers and yeah with the like, way everything was yeah changing so it wasn't stuff. it wasn't as you wanted fun. to work on muscle cars yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but what's, I, your, I, what's your favorite muscle car? that's a toss-up yeah. um now I re- right now it's like i really want a nova that's oh kinda, yeah for whatever reason oh, it's yeah. just I the novas yeah, yeah yeah like a 70 71 nova cool would kind of be my, my car yeah that's like the quintessential bubble car too like yeah. that and the cutlass kind of yeah yeah, yeah. Sure. But it's funny because the chevelle is you know, the nova's kind of like the the chevelle's baby brother yeah but it's not nearly as popular. They're a lot cheaper, but for yeah. whatever reason, I've kind of gravitated towards that. Towards that, nice. That car, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, maybe someday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this podcast makes yeah, huge. Yeah, exactly. Start making millions. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, the millions <laughs> yeah. start pouring and see, yeah. use him so he can get the muscle. That's right, I need my Nova. <laughs> hey, you want to trade a Nova for work? Oh, there you go. There we go. Boom. <laughs> get an upgrade. Yeah, that's you right. Get your Nova. Yeah, that's, that's right. awesome. Yeah, that's great. Um, okay, so you went out there for a couple months. Um, I've actually never been to Wyoming. What, yeah. what was it like out there? Different, different. Yeah. Very pretty. Um, yeah. Great place to visit, I think. Yeah. You know, the mountains you can see for miles and miles, and then it's just nothing but huge mountains. So it was nice. Yeah. I, I enjoyed it, but, you know, it's nothing quite like Maine. No, yeah. Uh, no, I, I yeah. enjoy Maine. Yeah, So, cool. yeah, so I came back, moved back to Harrison for a little bit, mm-hmm. and I never went far. You yeah, know, nice. I bought a house in Norway for a couple of years. Yeah. Um, and then settled in Gray, like I said, probably about nine years ago now, eight or nine years ago now. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Yep. So, um, so kind of transitioning a little bit into your business and your background, like as an electrician, like when did you kind of get into like the electrical work? Well, um, I, when I came back, my first job, when I came back from Wyoming, my first job, I picked up, my mother worked at Ski Abbey Homes. They did, um, oh, yeah. they sell modular houses. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And yeah, the electrician they were using needed help. He had just started his business. Okay. And it was a quick job for me to pick up. 
Right. right. You know, like so the week I came back. I'm ready. Like, Here we go. <laughs> yeah. I need a nice. job. Yeah. So I just started that, and that was November of 2000. Nice. And I just stuck with it. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So did uh, like did that employer or that electrician kind of help you get licensed and all that kind of stuff? What, yeah. What was, well, he, what was the, the funny thing there? is I actually, I worked for 17 years as a helper. Okay. I'm one of those guys that I'm hands on. Yeah. I will work all day long. I know how to do everything. Yeah. But when it comes to school, I'm not the best the, school. The school. brain doesn't go that yeah, way. Yeah. No, I, like, I, I don't understand. Want, I'd yeah. rather work and, and just do my work thing. Right. Um, so a couple of years ago, I finally got in my head. I'm like, you know what? I need more. I, I need to really better myself. I'm, I've been stuck here for 17 years. Just doing it. Yeah. But yeah. I got I to gotta get my license and okay. I got to make my life better. Yeah, so sure. he taught me a ton uh, about residential work so it was really all he did mm -hmm. so I did everything in the residential world for 12 years with him yeah great, um, great job great guy to work for yeah um, just kind of ran his course it was time to move on yeah sure um, which worked out well because I found another company that I worked for that did kind of 50 50 residential and commercial stuff oh gotcha yeah so, so you're able to get your hands in yeah that, that which I never yeah. had the experience of commercial work um, I never, you know, working in Bridgeton, you don't get to Portland, you don't get to Cape Elizabeth, <laughs> yes. you don't get to the bigger cities, you don't right. get to the jobs that, you know, the stuff that I had never seen before I was getting into. Yeah. So being able to do that really, I grew big time as an electrician because I got the variety that I never got. Right. You know, the confidence to be able to drive into Portland down Congress and park on the side of the road and pay the meter <laughs> and go into this yeah. huge six story building and meet some guy I've never met. And do the work that I've never done before. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, so it was a huge change, but if I didn't do that, I wouldn't be where I am today. That's great. So yeah, good. So yeah, you got that experience too. Yeah. So uh, from there, then, as far as your licensing and all that stuff goes, um, what does it take to get licensed? You have to. You have to have the state requires five hundred and seventy-six hours of schooling. It seems like a lot. <laughs> it does. It does um, it's probably not as much as I think. It's really not. I mean, there's different ways to get it. Mm -hmm. You can do at-home correspondence. Um, okay. You could go to local schools around here that do that sort of stuff. Sure. Um, I went through a company in Saco called New England Northern Lights. Okay. He has a little class down there. Go twice a week. Yeah. And just do your, your schooling that way. Oh, it's nice. strictly electrical. Which so you to, yeah, you go somewhere. So I yeah. have to directly go there. I, can, I, I like that though. I yeah. mean, the, the online classes I think are good for certain things, but when it comes to something like that, I like to I like yeah. to be there. I want to talk to somebody. Yeah. yeah. Well, for me, I couldn't go home. I tried at home three different times. Yeah. Um, the last time I did it through a company out of Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. I had it for three years and I completed twenty five percent of it. Oh my goodness! Wow. So yeah, sure. In two years through this guy, I could get my master's license and be done with it. Oh, good. So yeah. I finally said, you know what, I, I can't do it at home. It's, right. not, it's not working out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just, working a ten hour day. Sign up again. Yeah. Oh, I totally understand. Yeah. That, that's the same thing that I have with the online stuff. It's like, yeah, you get home, you're like, oh man, I gotta do that. Yeah, it's like I'm gonna get center. Side, you get sidetracked. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, There's yeah. life that happens right. after exactly. work. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Um, So uh, uh, speaking of life after work, you married? I am. Yeah, yeah, okay, good. Right, four years. Four years, nice. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, Any kids? Great. No kids. No kids? No good, kids. Good for you. I got three. You can borrow some if you want. <laughs> yeah. well, I'm hoping I'll be so busy that I don't have time for kids. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of my, my plan. That's, that's the idea. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just skate through. Yeah, yeah. 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 Nice. So, yeah. no, no kids. I'm just business, business, business. Try to try yeah. get this thing going. Yeah, good. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, good. Um, okay, so then uh, we'll fast forward a little bit here. Now we're kind of at the point you're starting your business. Uh, that must have been pretty stressful, though, to kind of be like, hey, I'm, I'm doing it. What, Honestly, what? it really, it, it wasn't. No? My personality, I am, if you ask my wife, I'm too even-keeled. Gotcha. <laughs> I'm just, if I, yeah. I don't get excited, I don't get nervous. Right. It's just, let's do this. Just grow, yeah, you know? ready to and roll. I, like I know, in, in this field, the way it is right now is so busy that I figure if I am a complete idiot and somehow mess this up, <laughs> which... I'd have to be really bad to do that because I've seen some guys running businesses that I yeah, don't understand like, how they're I, doing. Yeah, I can't believe what that they're doing. Yeah, right. yeah. So yeah. I figure worst case, I get a job. Yeah, yeah. It's not like you don't know how to do the work. Exactly. It's just yeah. it's just the running the business side. Yeah, yeah. It's right. the business side of that's everything. The main part. That's the only thing I got to figure out. Yeah. But so far, I've been doing it pretty well. I think. Good. I guess I'll find out when the IRS. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the only piece of advice is sock away money for taxes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so no, it's it was a pretty, it was different, obviously, going from punching a time clock 
every single day. That first Monday when I got up, and I'm like, no. wow, I can no. kind of do whatever I want right now. Yeah. I don't have to say, oh, shoot, I got to leave here at 610 because I got to be in Gorham yeah. by 7. Right. It's get up. Well, I told that customer I'd be there at 8, and I've got another 45 minutes before I have to leave. And Isn't that great? Yeah. That job's done, and it's, oh, what do I feel like doing now? Yeah. It's different. That's really cool. But it's nice. Yeah. It is nice. I bet. Yeah. Um, okay, so the name of the company, Beacon yep. Electric, right? Yeah. Um, anything behind the name, or was it, hey, it's it, we're in Maine, let's well, go with Beacon? I'll tell you what. I started out, I wanted, my initial thought was go with a name that was related to my name in some way. Okay. So, growing up, my father and myself had the nickname of Doobie. Okay. Last name, Dubriel. Right. And he's like, Doobie. Somebody would see me, hey, Dubes, what's going on? Yeah, sure. So, my first thought was kind of honor the nickname go with the doobie or doobs right. or something like that yeah and i was all excited about it for a short period of time <laughs> and then the more i thought about it i'm like one that kind of sounds like a stoner oh yeah yeah, I'm yeah not. sure so i, I right. don't smoke so smoking I'm, doobies yeah yeah, yeah. Absolutely. so i'm like you know what i don't really want to go that route because i don't want people to get you don't want to associate with it. yeah exactly sure, sure and then i was talking to another guy that i know that owns a business and he said one thing that i would recommend is stay away from using your name in your business. Oh, interesting. Two reasons. Yeah. One, if I ever get to the point where I want to sell it, it is linked to me by name. It's a good. It's a good point. So yeah, I said, you know what? That actually makes sense. It might be more difficult for somebody to say, yes, I want to buy your business. Right. The other one is if anything ever happens in the news um, legally with anybody with the last name Dubriel, right, and somehow it kind of links to my name. People oh, are yeah, say, sure. People see the headlines. Yeah. And they'll think of you exactly. regardless of if yeah. it is you or not. Yep. Yeah. So it makes like, sense. you know what? It makes sense to stay right away from that. Yeah. So I want to try to keep my, my work along the coast area. I was trying to come up with coastal names. Yeah. Sure. I went through all the names on the state website of, is this one available? Nope. This one? Nope. <laughs> so I went through all the, you know, the high tide and the breakwater. And yeah, yeah. finally I Googled Beacon and it was available. That's I great. You know what? Beacon. It has to do with lights. Yeah. It has to do with the ocean. Yeah. I'm like, that's perfect. It's perfect. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And it was available. I couldn't believe with all the beacon businesses in the it's same amazing, Maine. Right? Yeah. yeah. Beacon Electric. Yeah. Was available. I mean, even the Maine Mariners have a mascot beacon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, there's beacon really, there's beacon CrossFit, there's beacon Every, everything. everything. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Um, okay. Well, that that's cool. That's yeah. a cool story. Yeah. Um, so then. Uh, Let's get into a little bit about like what your service is, kind of what you do, all that kind of stuff. I'm assuming as an electrician, you'll probably do anything. Yeah, well, um, right now with the license that I currently hold, because okay. I haven't got my master's license yet. Right, so you're right still now, working on that. I have my limited residential house wiring license, Okay. which allows me to do everything on a residential house to family dwelling or less. If in the state of Maine, for whatever reason, with this so license. anything, no, no matter what it is. No matter what you, it if is. If it's a two unit or less. Yeah, two unit or less, do new services, pull permits, rewire, All that stuff. new construction, anything you could dream of to okay. do with residential two family gotcha. or less. All right. So for whatever reason, the state figures a three family is <laughs> A world of difference? Right. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it makes sense. They yeah. should just either single family and... Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. just weird. Yeah. But, you know, okay. wiring a four-unit apartment building is no different than wiring a two-unit. Right. Except for the fact the state says I can't do it. You can't do it. Yeah. Gotcha. So, okay. I mean, within the next year, I will have my master's license, and I'll be capable of doing everything, but for now... For now, right. It's for now, services. it's residential it's, yeah. all that stuff. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the good thing, most of our, most of my clientele, I do, I do residential real estate, so most of my guys, that's who yep. fit, right fit right with you, so perfect. That, that's perfect. Um, okay, so, but, so from that perspective, you could do pretty much anything that, you know, most of my clientele would want. Yep. Um, without just kind of, I, I have some things jotted down here, I figure we get into some more specifics rather than just like a blanket of, hey, I do electrical work. Okay, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, um, so, yeah, I do electric. Uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, see you later. Yeah. So I know one thing that's pretty popular here in Maine are uh, generators, you know. Oh, for sure. Uh, yeah, a lot for of talk sure. about, hey, generators, so I'm assuming yep. you do that. Oh, yes, I do them. Um, definitely do them. Do them tomorrow. Oh, perfect. Yep. Okay, good. So why don't, you, why don't we maybe talk a little bit about, like, what uh, like what there are out there for generators. Like, there's you could do a generator hookup, and then you got to have your own little generator. Yep, yep. manual start generator. Yeah, or the automatic style. Yeah, which are nice. Right. That's, Price difference is fairly drastic. Yeah. But... Especially for the older clientele, an automatic start is by far the way to go. Right. 
Because then, yeah, well, let's talk. Let's talk about those for a minute. Um, do you ever know rough cost on on those? It, it, it probably it's, varies a lot. Um, the last two that I did were for my end because you have to get propane hooked up to them as well. Okay. Which that's an additional cost, either yeah. propane or natural gas, depending right. on what you Where have you at your place. Yeah. Um, right around seven to eight thousand dollars for okay. a fairly simple hookup. Right. Because everyone varies depending on where your meter is, your CMP meter, right. how your far electrical away panel, panel, how far go. away it is. Like, exactly. Okay. Yeah, there are a lot of variables, but I yeah. wouldn't plan on spending it. It also depends on brand. You know, if sure. someone is brand specific, which most people aren't, um, I try to go with either Onan or Kohler, okay. which are two of the best generators you can buy. Sure. Um, the Generax are nice. They're more of a big box store generator. Right, walk in. Yeah, those are the ones that like, you see at Home Depot. Exactly, yeah. Like yeah. I yeah, mean, they're gotcha. great. They work. They've been around for years. Mm -hmm. But they're you know they're a little lower on the, the food chain. Right. Uh, now, from your business, like if somebody called you and said, hey, Kev, you know, I, I want an automatic generator. Come on over. Are you able to price it out like that would include the generator and the whole nine Yes. Yeah, so the price I give includes the generator, the transfer switch, um, the cement pad it sits on, the battery, um, a cold weather kit, which keeps the battery warm in the winter time. Okay. Uh, it also has a built-in charger, um, the generator, delivery, setup, wiring, the first initial startup and test. Oh, nice. So it's yeah, it's turnkey on my end. You'd have to typically have the homeowner deal with the propane right. side because they're going to have to be dealing with the monthly payments and the contract, whatever they have to do. Exactly. So they, yeah, if they don't have propane at their house already, they got to call, you know, yeah. one of the propane companies. And they'll, they'll, I'm assuming they'll come and hook that stuff up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I can recommend propane guys that will hook up the generator itself because typically I mean, a propane company will just come set the tank and say, there you go. Oh, right. So you got to um, have somebody run the line. Too, correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And even, even at that, sometimes if you have one tank at your house, because all you have is a gas fireplace. They might come out right. and say, you need a second tank. You need more. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. the generators typically use about a gallon an hour is usually what mm -hmm. they say. Okay. Um, so if you have, going or, yeah, when if it's, it's, or when it's if running. If it's running constantly okay. under load. Gotcha. Uh, so if you have a power outage, you get a, another ice storm and it's running for a couple of days, you know, you're burning through some propane. Yeah. So you don't want to be in a situation where, great, you have an automatic generator. You're awesome for the first 12 hours. Yeah. And then after that, you're using flashlights and candles. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's funny because uh, I've had people, I've had people uh, just talking to them, and they're like, "Yeah, I got an automatic generator, but the power went out." They didn't even realize it because the automatic, you know, pops oh, yeah. on. Yeah, you know that's great. I mean? yep. And then, uh, and they're running like the microwave, and they, you know what I mean? All this <laughs> yeah. stuff, and all of a sudden, like all the propane's gone. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it happens. Yeah. It definitely yeah. happens. If your tanks aren't sized properly, you can definitely burn through it. Burn through it. Yeah, yep. sure. Yep. Um, now, are there, I'm assuming they're different sizes of generators. Like, hey, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, to, typically eight kW, eight thousand watts is, is the smallest you'll see. Okay. And you can get them up to any size you want. Typical house a 20 kW would be the biggest you'd really need. Right. Um, I'm and that'll fire most everything yeah, in the house. Yeah, like yeah. tomorrow I'm installing a 13 kW, which has a 60 amp breaker. Okay. A lot of older houses in Maine, the service size was only 60 amps for many years. Right. So 60 amps would get you pretty much everything you want. Okay. I mean, I wouldn't be doing laundry, cooking Thanksgiving dinner. Right. When the power Yeah, you out. want to pull back a little bit, yeah. but it'll at least, yep. yeah, it'll yep. at least pop. It'll run it. everything, TVs, yeah. your heat, your hot water, your whatever else you need right. for yeah. the important stuff. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yep. Yeah, very cool. Very convenient. So then, uh, so there's that side of it, and then there's the manual, you know, the, the little generator, which is yep. what I have at my house, actually. Yep. Um, so then, by doing that, you're really just setting up the, the connection. Yeah, what I do is set up, um, it's called an interlock kit. You put it in the panel. It just makes sure that the homeowner can't turn the main breaker on while the generator is hooked up running the house. Right. It's basically a safety switch. Okay. Um, so from there, you run a wire from that outside to what they call the PB30, which is the plug. Right. The big, like, yeah. 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 It's kind of fun. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, it looks cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So and that's really it. It's a simple setup. You know, you're looking at probably six hundred bucks, depending on the length of how far the generator plug is from your panel. That's really the biggest price difference. You know, if it's further away, the price is going to go up a little bit. Right, right. And then if you have your own cord to plug the generator in or not, yeah, those cords aren't cheap. So I can provide it. You can. Typically, okay. that's discussed with me and the homeowner. If they say I don't have a cord, can you get me one? 
Sure can. How long do you want it? I'll get you a price for it. Right. Yep. Now, are you able to get the, the generators themselves as I well? I can, yeah, yeah. If, okay. they, if they need to generate the whole nine yards. You can, can, yeah, you can do that, that well. whole yeah. package. Yep. Right, right. Yep. And, and I know that one because that, that's how I have my house set up. I know that one. There's all sorts of sizes and oh, yeah, shapes get, yeah. and all that kind yeah. of stuff for generators. Yeah, yeah. so many varieties of those generators yeah. that... Um, there's probably not one big enough to run your whole house, though, as far as that. Not really. You know, right. I, mean, I mean, if you want that, you're better off just, just to dish out yeah, the money and go with the Yeah, just go with the big yeah, guy. Yeah. 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 Typically, the manual start is if you want to have some lights, some outlets, and that your furnace, right. you know, the basics. Yeah. That's the way to go. Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, like yeah. I, mine's big enough to keep the furnace going. Yeah. And, you know, some lights, maybe the yeah. TV, and that's about yeah. it. So, I mean, if, you, if you're in a place where you don't lose power that often right. and you're capable of starting it, yeah, you know, if you let it sit in your garage for six months and not start it, you go out to start it, you might have a problem dealing with it. So if gotcha. you're not right. really mechanically sound to know how to fix an issue, if it won't start because the gas is gummed up and the carburetor is full of crap, then you might be shit out of luck right. come a power outage yeah, at yeah, 9 yeah. o'clock at night. Or, <laughs> so, so every six months you recommend? Yeah, it out, I mean, I'd probably go, out, yeah. If you can remember. Yeah, I mean, yeah. especially before winter. I'd say before winter, oh, yeah, if sure. you get into November, December, Yeah, you don't, want to, be, you don't want to be freezing your butt off. No, out there well, especially time. if it's kept in a cold garage. Yeah. You know, everything gets cold, and we know stuff doesn't start as well when it's cold. Yeah. So it's definitely a good idea to make sure it's going to start when you need it. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, so I think that covers us a lot on generators. That's some great info there. Um, a couple other things. A lot of what I see, like on inspections, are like, geez, the the panel, you know, the breaker yep. box is is yep. old, yep. you know, or even maybe there's a fuse, you know. Yeah. You yeah, don't see a lot. You don't see a lot yeah, of those. But, no, you know, no, it definitely know. happens. I mean, right. you see, typically a house where somebody's been living in for forty years, you got someone's grandmother, or you know, they're just older, been there since the seventies, right? And the house just never got upgraded. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Exactly. Right? Yeah. 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 The only time it's going to get noticed is. In a sale, right? One inspector goes through and says, "Holy cow! Yeah, this needs to get fixed." Right. Yeah. Um, do you do a lot of those panel upgrades? Yeah, definitely panel things? upgrades, yeah. service upgrades. Okay. Um, you know, the old knob and tube in a, in a situation of a sale, a house will never be able to sell without that being fixed. Right. Either well, by the seller or the buyer, obviously. However, that gets worked. Somebody's got to do it. Well, Somebody's I found like a lot of uh, a lot of the financing options that are out there yeah. don't. You know, if they if they get wind that there's not not yeah. a tube there, like psh, correct. You know, yeah, insurance companies will it. not insure. Won't insure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. So, um, so that's a big thing. Yep. Um, hundred amp and two hundred amp service. You yep. know. Uh, standard from what I see is 100 amp almost everywhere or most it's houses. It's common, yeah. yeah. The older houses, it is common. Yeah. What's the, uh, the, but that's the question I get a lot from a lot of people. What the heck's the difference there? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you just got it, the ability to run a lot more stuff off 200. I mean, it's okay. essentially twice the amount of power. Right. You know, um, do you need a 200? A lot of houses don't. Right. Depending on what you have. If you have a lot of, all your appliances are gas and you don't have anything else. You really probably don't need it to. Okay, gotcha. Um, if you have a hot tub, all electric appliances, your dryer and your um, range. Right. If all that stuff is electric, yeah, sure. yeah, then definitely 200 amp would be, better would be a better service, a way yeah. to go. Yeah. Now, is that the type of thing that uh, like anybody really can upgrade that pretty easy? Or I mean, we got to call CMP or something. Well, CMP so, for a service yeah. upgrade, CMP needs to get scheduled. The inspector yeah. needs to get scheduled. Okay. All of these, the cities down here, Portland, South Portland, Scarborough, Cape. Yeah, the code enforcer has to come out before CMP will reconnect. So oh, you gotcha. schedule CMP, you schedule the code enforcer, CMP disconnects. I do all my work, and then the code enforcer comes out, looks at it, and then they call CMP and says, "Yep." Oh, so it's a little bit of a process. It is a process. Yeah. yeah. Now, are you process. typically able to time that all on the same day? Or oh yeah. It, oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, so, a typical so service upgrade are, like, out for a few days. No, no, okay. no. I mean, a typical yeah. service upgrade a half a day. Oh, okay. Depending good. on you know access to the panel, how bad it is, how many circuits, right? And how many wires have to get extended. A lot of the older panels are a lot smaller than the newer panels. Yeah. The cabinets are just so much smaller, and they always jam them up against the rafters. So a newer service, the box is huge. No, so the wires, a lot of them aren't long enough to get into the panel, oh, gotcha. get onto the breakers. Yeah. So it's just a lot more time extending stuff. Right, to get that cut. Yeah. Yeah, but stuff. typically yeah. half a day is usually all, right. all it takes. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, are there any other popular services that you that you do? Um, like, do you do ongoing service? Like, do you do servicing for generators and or anything else? Yeah, like, I mean, I'll do any, you know? any kind of, re anything you have at your house, really. I mean, yeah. if you have something not working, service call stuff, you have a chirping 
smoke detector. Yeah. You know, anything like that. It's Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Is there anything too small? <laughs> no, there's, there's really not. You know, yeah. because to me, I want to make every customer happy. Right. So if you call me and say, listen, I've got this one outlet that doesn't look good. I want it replaced. Right. That's no problem. I'll come out. I'll take care of you. Yeah, sure. You know, because in my mind, any small job like that can lead to, could least, lead to something else. Right, or at least a consistent more business. Well, exactly. All that yeah. Kind of stuff. Yep. Yeah. 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 Another big thing that we see in, uh, well, two big things actually just popped in my head in inspections. So, GFCI outlets. Yeah, you know, that's usual. Historically, they're never where they're supposed to nope. be, or you know, all that nope. kind of stuff. Um, why don't you explain what those are real quick? Uh, it's pretty pretty simple, but uh, what like a GFCI? Yeah, it's it's the outlet you'll see that has the two little buttons on it that says yeah. test and reset. reset right. Anywhere there's water, kitchen counters all are required to have GFCI protection. Bathroom outlets are required to have them. Garage outlets are required to have them, and basement outlets. Yeah. So if you're not covered, a lot of older houses, 80s and older, typically those houses don't have them don't where they're supposed to, unless right. they've been replaced already. Yeah, gotcha. Um, <clears throat> now, it is possible that they're on a breaker. They do make breakers that are GFI. Oh, yeah, I've seen those. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So just because you don't have that little they're rectangle. They're not up upstairs. They yeah, might be, they, they might, might be, be in protected the in the basement on okay. the panel. Gotcha. Um, and if I understand that right, that's like they're around the water like that because if it happens to pop it, it doesn't kill the whole house. Well, yes, so, that it's because it trips easier. Like if you're, the okay. thing is like a hair dryer in the bathroom. Right. Somebody's in the bathroom to blow dry in the hair. The sink's full of water. If that blow dryer falls in that sink, you want it to pop. Yes, yeah, so that yeah. that pops quicker. That senses the disruption better than a breaker does. Okay. A breaker won't necessarily trip if that happened. Oh, gotcha. Where a GFI will trip instantly. Gotcha. Okay. You. Right. So it's a safety thing. Right. So those old school like TV shows that we used to watch with people throwing toasters and yeah yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah it's because those were old they didn't have GFI protection <laughs> yeah 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 those people were now screwed. it is yeah yeah now <laughs> yeah. it is you're okay yeah, yeah exactly don't try it of course yes yeah, disclaimer <laughs> yeah um, so then the uh, the one last thing that popped in my head was uh, uh, double tapping you yeah. know here, yeah <laughs> we. Yeah. Did, I swear almost every house, for some reason, like the yep. inspector, when they pull off that panel and they're looking at it, almost always, up oh, a couple double taps, yep. you know. Yep. Uh, why don't we talk about what, what is that exactly? That is typically when a homeowner or a homeowner's friend that knows how to do electrical work <laughs> Big quotes, wanted yeah. to add something in the panel, right. and the panel was already full. Gotcha. Now, okay. the panels are only designed, to, as an electrician, I'm not allowed to put in a new panel and fill it 100%. I'm oh, supposed to leave okay. at least two spaces in that panel oh, interesting. Okay. for future work. Right. Um, so back in the day, they didn't do that. Right. They just filled it up, said, all right, this panel's big enough. It's going to save me a couple bucks. Right. We're going with it. Yeah, that's why we see often like some other panels. Yeah, sub, know, yeah. sub panel. Yeah. yeah. A lot, you'll either see that or you'll see the little tandem breakers, the cheater breakers that have two oh, little shoot. switches on the breaker. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's another way to kind of cheat, cheat the system. Gotcha. You know? Yeah. But really, that panel was only designed to have... X amount of breakers in it. Right. So you start double tapping, overloading stuff. You now it's not really the right way to do it. Right. You, know, you really should either take that panel out and put in a bigger panel that's yeah. the correct size. Right. Or add a sub panel. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Now, so I mean, it sounds like adding, you know redoing the panel is obviously the best solution. What's the rough cost on that? Usually, lately, the ones I've done have been right around 800 bucks. Yeah. Yeah, to rip it out, put that it into one. I mean, it's a lot cleaner looking than adding a sub panel. Sure. You know, a lot of places don't really have the space to put a sub panel and have it look look halfway decent. Right. You know what I mean? For me, I'm not about to do work that looks shoddy, that I'm not going to gum something up and just say it's legal, right. but it looks like shit. It's legal, sort of. <laughs> yeah. 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 Gotcha. Even if it's 100% legal, but right. it looks like shit. Well, for 800 bucks, <laughs> even 1000 I mean, it seems like you know that if, if that's the if you need more room, you yeah, know, you might as well spend. Yeah, more. and especially these days, where everybody's going with heat pumps. Yeah, oh, you yeah, know sure. those take up two spots in the panel if you have one outside unit. Oh, that's a good point. So you know the older houses that have full panels, you really need to do something. You need to do something. To make yeah, them if, you, if you want a heat pump. Yeah, 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 that's true because those are those are very popular. Yes, those are extremely popular. Yeah, I've sure. fucked up a ton of those lately. I bet. Yep. Um, you don't set up the heat pumps though, right? You, no. You just do the electrical Yeah, I just do the electrical right? side of it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I supply the breaker, the wire out to the disconnect, and then I'll wire up the outside unit. Yeah. Typically, the heat pump companies will do everything from the outside unit inside right. to the wall mounts. All right, perfect. Yep. All right, cool. Yep. Um, that's all on my notes. Um, anything else you can think of that you... Not really. No? I mean... I think we covered a lot. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, good. Yep. Awesome. And don't let the tattoo scare you. No. Just... 
I got some hidden too. So it's fine. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to see this. <laughs> <laughs> we'll show you that. Yeah, no, I was wondering, going into a house, I, you know, people are calling me on the phone and they've never seen me before. Yeah. I walk in and I'm like, that thought always goes through my head. Yeah. Like, what do you what do you think? I think about nowadays, things? I mean, they're so common nowadays. They are. You know, they are. You know. What was your first? Do you, do you have a any thought when you see somebody with tattoos? Um, I like tattoos, and yeah. I mean, I have a good friend who's a tattoo artist. Yeah. So you know, no, I I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. But I know what you mean. You yeah, know, there, there's certainly still like the like the a little bit of stigma. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. Uh, but I think they're they're becoming so popular now that it's, yeah. you know, I mean, everybody has a tattoo. Yeah. You know? And I've been very fortunate for, and it's funny a lot of the older generation that really appreciate tattoos. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll I'll see an older person in their seventies or eighties and. I can see him looking at me, and I'm like, "Oh man, what are they thinking?" Yeah. I'm like, Come on, man. I love your tattoos. Nice. Like, <laughs> yeah. Cool. That, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, I just I don't want to. It, personally, I don't really. If you want to judge me, that's fine. Right. Because ultimately, it doesn't matter how I look. Right. You know. Exactly. I'm a nice guy. You know. Yeah. Whatever. I can tell. Yeah. No, you're a great guy. Um, sounds like you do great work. So I mean, that's really. I do my best, and that's yeah. all I can do. You know, I yeah. want to give the people the best quality work I can for yeah. a fair price. Yeah. I'm not out to to jab anybody for, for extra money just because. Right. Yep. Yeah, sounds great. Yeah. So uh, I guess to, to finish up then, um, it's Beacon Electric. Um, you got a van. I saw it outside. Yep, with the, yep. I'll let it up nice. I'll let it up so I'll it looks it good. Keep an eye out for him. Um, I'll put in the description, I'll put like his uh, email address, you know, all that. Yep. I have that stuff for you. Uh, what's your phone number? It is 207-650-2139. Okay. You can also find me on Facebook, uh, Beacon Electric Facebook page. Perfect. If you can find it, share it, like it, write a recommendation. Right, post it. Yeah, anything. exactly. Subscribe to it, all that yep. kind of stuff. Yeah, try to get my name out there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, you know, uh, look him up on Facebook. Give him a call if you need anything. And, uh, yeah, man, yeah. thanks for coming. Dude. Thank you very much. I yeah. really appreciate yeah, it. I appreciate it. Well, thanks, guys. Hopefully this was helpful. And remember, if you're going to make Maine your home, you don't have to do it alone.